time for our everyday health conversation. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, as it's commonly known, was heralded as a game changer in the fight against HIV and AIDS. It's a combination of anti-HIV medications that lowers the risk of infection quite drastically. And it's available at primary health care facilities across South Africa. But do enough people know about it? What's the uptake been? Is it something that you can talk about with your GP? Well, we've got the pers perfect person to answer that question. We're joined by our resident GP here on the Sunday edition of Newslink, Dr. Donnie Fick, who joins us in studio. Dr. Donnie, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, when we started discussing what to talk about this week, I mean, the list is endless, yeah. and we'll get through them over the months to come. So the people must stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> because such is the, the length and breadth of the kind of things you deal with every day in your practice. Um, I... I assumed that PrEP was only made available a few years ago because that's when I started hearing about it in the news and that was when there were new developments in PrEP, there are new versions coming out and improved versions all the time. But it's actually been available in South Africa for seven odd years, yes. if not longer. Um, from your experience, do enough people know about it? Has there been enough uh, uptake so that we can see that actually having an impact on our AIDS numbers? No. Or HIV numbers, rather? Definitely not. That's why we're here this morning when we think we've got a, a big enough platform to tell people there is preventative medication out there mm -hmm. for HIV. I mean, the stats say that it reduces the sexual risk by 95%. If you look at the numbers, I think 240,000 people in South Africa get HIV every year. We still have the highest mm -hmm. HIV incidence in the world. And our new infections comprise of 15% of the worldwide infections. So we still have a lot of HIV infected people, but only 45,000 people in the country are on PrEP. And, and, and about and, 100 and, at my practice. So I think. <laughs> and, 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 and those numbers do not lie. I mean, I remember the case in Health Department set up the statement, I think it was a few months ago at the end of last year. And they were very alarmed because they were picking up that there were uh, around 1,300 girls in the 10 to 19 age group were being infected in the country every week um, now various population groups have different risks for exactly. different reasons how do you approach that with prep I don't, yeah i suppose we say everyone that's at risk if you're sexually active and you at risk of contracting hiv you should be on prep that's kind of the the global understanding but our numbers in south africa are so high mm. and prep is so dare i say easily available obviously i also have to respect the fact that in the rest of the country gaining access to primary health care is not so easy mm. But it is such a game changer. I've got so many patients on it that they, they're happy that they started. And I think we need to clarify what PrEP actually is. It's a tablet taken once a day mm. that reduces your risk of HIV infection in an HIV negative person. That, that's it. But there are other versions of it. I believe there was also a trial for an injection that you uh, would be able to take, I think, every two months. Exactly. But a pull is something, and we take a pull for different things. I take a contraceptive pull exactly. uh, every day, and that's also in the upper 90 percent percentile of, of effectiveness. Um, is it awareness that's a problem, it's or awareness. is it, again, an issue of stigma that a 16-year-old girl in KZN who knows that she's sexually active, let's, yes. let's work with that premise, because we all also know if you're dealing with girls as young as 10 years old we're not exactly. always dealing with um, we're not dealing with consensual uh, uh, sex exactly. in that in that age group but let's say a 16 17 year old girl in KKZ and she knows she's sexually active um, is there stigma involved in her going to a primary health care facility and asking what can I take to lower my chance of getting HIV I, I think there must be a stigma I, not from outside from at least personally from a healthcare practitioner point of view but I suppose some people will be like, if you go to your friend and be like, I want to be on prayer, people are like, oh, you're loose, you're sexually immoral. There's a lot of stigma that goes around it. At the end of the day, it's much better than living with HIV. And I think that's what we need to address. We need to open those conversations, have the education, and be like, there is medication there that can prevent you from contracting this virus. It's very, very well tolerated. I think only 10% of people experience side effects, and if only that, for the first three to four weeks, namely headaches, nausea, and vomiting. So very effective drug, well tolerated, shown to reduce the numbers. I think there were studies done in Sydney and San Francisco, how it dropped the numbers of HIV in those cities where they had a big problem with HIV previously. You're talking about the need to have these conversations in your daily practice. You've got an ordinary general practitioner practice here yeah. in Johannesburg um, uh, with a, a diverse group of community members that come to you that makes up part of, of who are, are your patients. 
how how do these conversations go for you? You're very cool. You're young. <laughs> you're you're accessible. You're approachable. Um, how do you approach these conversations with your patients? So usually. Um, what happens is patients will come in and want to be treated for an STD and they'll be like look I've got this and we'll open that discussion there you'll find certain points where you can introduce this and we look if you if you're coming for an HIV test as well so patients usually that test for HIV or STDs will open up those conversations and be like look are you aware of PrEP mm -hmm. uh, lots of people lots of people are aware of PEP post exposure prophylaxis once you've already had the incident so that lots of people know about they'll often come in for post exposure prophylaxis and that's when we'll open that that conversation as well. Let's talk a little bit then about teenagers. Let's yes. say ages 15 up, and I know um, uh, teenagers are having sex as far younger ages. Um, and we often, need to be open about that. Right? We well, this is my thing. So, so talk to me how you're dealing about teenagers or even teenagers who are coming in with their families. How do you approach that's that very, situation? That's very difficult. Like the first port of call that we have with teenagers in this realm is when we talk about contraceptives, age 13, 14. Sure which is already hairy because then the parents get involved and but you have to I mean we have to be open frank and honest about this mm -hmm. teenagers are having unprotected intercourse and we need to prevent them from getting from getting HIV all the writing being done about uh, prep uh, do always focus on particular uh, population groups uh, uh, at, at risk of getting HIV such as teenagers yes. LGBTQI yes. plus community sex workers and those who have partners who are HIV positive yes. and that is That's a very, a, very particular that. set of situations. Because of, it's such an things. interesting part of medicine where the one partner is HIV positive, the yeah. other one's HIV negative and they're trying to conceive a baby somewhere in between all of this. PrEP comes in very handy there and obviously... And, and that must be life changing for those couples. Huge. I mean, we're all old enough, well I'm old enough to have witnessed the early days of HIV in South Africa mm. which were horrid. I've been on some of those antiretroviral therapies for needle stick injuries. They were terrible drugs. They were really dark ages in Kalafong that I remember. It's a different world out there these days and so, excuse me, so much easier to tolerate. So, I mean, it's a big game changer for, for, for parents. It's also a big game changer for pregnant women. PrEP can be taken as a pregnant lady. You can take it when you're breastfeeding and it reduces the mother to child transmission of HIV. Another big game changer. You did say that, uh, oh, I can't remember if we did speak about it, I know you did mention side effects. Have you had any amongst your patients? No. As I said, very well tolerated. Mm. Also, compliance is good because you take one tablet once a day. And yeah, very few people experience side effects. Where to from here? I mean, are you, when you talk about having these conversations with your patients, do you bring it up in conversation? Yes, or do. do you also have patients that come to you saying, listen, I think I need to go on PrEP? So I've got a lot of patients that are in the group of men who have sex with men. They're very well educated in the Melville area about this. They come in and say, I want to be on PrEP. They, they're very well read about it. And there's another group where we have to open up those conversations and just chat to them about it. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Can and we do three quick fire facts on PrEP that people please. don't and know about? Please, and you did about. tell me there's pre and there's also post. Yes. That's what I forgot to mention to you well, as well. We're going to talk about the, it's not a contraceptive. It doesn't protect you against STDs or STIs, sorry. So lots of people think if they take PrEP, I'm immune from STIs. No, you need to check regularly for that. And we need to support the patients that are on it because it is a big game changer. Okay, PrEP, you can go to your primary health care practitioner or even if you're on medical aid, start the conversation and, and find the right process. Uh, and the other thing I read about is the, the problem that you need to stick with it. Yes. A and tell us why. Well, there's a new, for, for men who sleep with men, there's a new format called on-demand prep where you only have to take two tablets before intercourse and one tablet for two days afterwards. So there is new data coming out that yes, they are trying to see that you don't have to take tablets every day. Mm -hmm. But please, as we say every week, talk to your doctor about these things. They'll guide you. And everything's a personal, like well tailored to your needs. So if you speak mm -hmm. to your primary health care doctor, they'll tailor a specific regime, regime. to suit you. Okay, Dr. Donny Fick, the man with um, most of the answers. <laughs> and we do thank you uh, for your time. Uh, if there's anything you want Dr. Donny um, uh, to answer or talk about on these segments with him, every second Sunday you can find him on social media. What's your name on Instagram again? Donny Ducky. Donny Ducky. Yeah, we need to talk, that, yeah, we need to talk about possibly it's changing fun, that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Uh, uh, Donny Fick, uh, you can find him on Instagram is where he's the most active and you can find out also about his lifestyle and how he encourages people to be active and to look after their whole selves so that you end up seeing your GP far less yes. than <laughs> you need to act.
Donny Ducky on Instagram is where you can find out. And he's always very, very active on Instagram if you do need to ask him anything. Um, we thank him for his time this morning.